welcome to our program tonight. We are happy you're all here. My name is Jen Maxey. I'm the Assistant Director of Public Programs at the Skirball. My pronouns are she and her. I am tonight uh, wearing a black sweater. I'm a white woman with long, light brown, dark hair. I'm sitting in a room with a armoire behind me and a guitar on the wall behind me. So for those of you who may not be familiar with the Skirball, we are a cultural center and a museum. We're guided by the Jewish tradition of welcoming the stranger. We seek to bring people together for cultural experiences that we hope provoke greater understanding by hearing each other's stories, sharing each other's stories. So our program tonight is part of an ongoing series called LA Reflections, where we're talking with culture makers in various disciplines to check in on how they're doing, how their community's doing, what's going on with their practice, because of course we're all living through this extraordinary time together. I was listening to a talk recently from the great um, Reverend Sekou, who if you don't know him, he's a musician, an artist, an activist. He said that artists are legislators of time. They are the diplomats between the world that was, the world that is, and the world that will be. And he added that part of great art is to tell the truth about darkness, but to never let darkness have the final word. So it's in that spirit tonight that we have assembled a, a, a panel of amazing and inspiring artists and truth tellers, creators in the performance realm. And I'm going to let our fabulous moderator tell you more about them, but Bruce Lemon is with us, Ryan Heffington is here, Christina Wong, Patricia Garza. We are so honored to have them all with us tonight. And our fabulous moderator, Jessica Hanna. So I'll just introduce her. Jessica is an LA-based director and producer. She's a member of the Kilroys, which is an activist artist group that's working for gender parity in the American theater. She is an artist in resident at Thymely Arts. She is on the board of the City Company. She co-founded the Bootleg Theater here in Los Angeles and was the managing director there for 12 years. Jessica's focus has been a lot on developing and directing premieres and new works, and she's been a guest director at Cal State Long Beach, Occidental, Cal Arts, Cal Poly Pomona. And so it is my great pleasure to welcome Jessica Hanna. Jessica, take it away. Hello. Hello. Thank you, Jen. Ah, what a pleasure it is to be here tonight. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Um, yes, we have an amazing panel tonight. And uh, first, I would like to uh, I would like to let you know that we are coming to you from the unceded lands of the Quiche Gabrielino Tongva peoples, as well as the Serrano, Western Shoshone, and Chemehuevi peoples, who are the past, present, and future stewards of this land. We celebrate them and thank them for the care they take, and we are grateful for the opportunity to share in the care of these precious lands that we live on. Thank you. Tonight, we will have great conversation with our minds and our bodies about art in this pandemic life. Uh, we're gonna take some questions at the end, so feel free to drop those into the Q&A tab there on your thing. Uh huh. So yes, and my name is Jessica and my pronouns are she, her. I am white with long brown blonde hair and brown eyes. I am standing in a room with white curtains behind me and the covered doors behind me. And I'm wearing glasses, black rim glasses, a black shirt with a Christina Wong for public office pin on it. I am thrilled to be joined by this amazing group of Los Angeles based creators and makers that I am a super fan of both their work and their very beings. They all walk their talk and they're awesome. <laughs> um, first, let me introduce Patricia Garza. Patricia was the recent line producer at Center Theater Group and is newly started as the Director of Programs and Engagement at Network of Ensemble Theaters. Hello, Patricia. Hi there. Thank you so much for having me. Um, just to say hello to everyone and do a little introduction. Uh, I'm a queer Latinx human from the stolen lands of the Tongva Quiche people here in Los Angeles. I am brown skin with faded red hair and these fabulous cat eye glasses. And I'm wearing a turquoise shirt and behind me is a golden curtain and a lot of books that I have read, but these are all children's books. <laughs> so just putting that out there. Um, and I'm a producer, I facilitate equity work and I really love supporting collaborative processes. So thank you for having me here today. 
Wonderful. Welcome, Patricia. Uh, next, we have Ryan Heffington. Uh, Ryan is a choreographer, director, and Sweat Fest captain, and the previous Sweat Spot owner. Welcome, Ryan. Thanks for having me. Welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Ryan Heffington, as Jessica mentioned. Uh, I am a 40 something Caucasian male. Um, I've got a quarantine length beard. Uh, I'm wearing a uh, dusty blue flannel. I'm sitting in my house in Joshua Tree with a fire behind me, keeping me warm. And uh, my pronouns are he, him. Thank you. Fantastic. Welcome, welcome. Uh, and next we have Christina Wong, is a solo performance artist, YouTube creator, elected neighborhood <laughs> council person of Koreatown, and the, over, the, the uh, sweatshop overlord of the Auntie's Sewing Squad. Welcome, Christina. Hello, everyone. I am Christina Wong. You see her pronouns. I'm here in Koreatown, where I, I am elected on the neighborhood council. Very fancy position. So powerful. And um, I am wearing a tie-dye blue and white sweatshirt, the side braid. Just had new eyelashes glued into my face because of my priorities together for um, lockdown. I am in front of a hand-sewn set from my show, which I performed from my house. So there's a presidential seal with a marijuana leaf and tampons and the words e pubic unum and uh, hands on American flags behind me. And I'm Asian, I'm Asian for all you, you know, white guys who wanna really visualize, <laughs> creepy white guys. Okay, anyway, back. <laughs> I <can> first. Welcome. <laughs> And finally, we have Bruce Levin Jr. And Bruce is a director, actor, and producer, artistic director of Watts Village Theater Company, and associate artistic director and ensemble member of Cornerstone Theater, as well as host of Unheard LA on KPCC. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for, for being with us today. Um, I am a, a Black man uh, with a glorious head of locks atop my head, uh, the, the sides and back all shaved clean. Uh, beard is not quite quarantine length. Um, I'm a freshly turned 36 year old as of a few days ago. Yes. Uh, and I'm wearing a uh, purple shirt with a piece of fool's gold around my neck, uh, radiating some bright energy uh, and good stuff. Um, I am in a, I'm in a, a room that is actually various different shades of of white on the walls uh, with some gray mixed in with it and a bookcase in the far back. Uh, I'm happy to be here. Hello and welcome, excellent. Okay, in prep for our discussion, we all agreed that uh, we are in seemingly two, in the seemingly two dimensional world of online Zooms and streaming, we are still our three dimensional selves. And we wanted to start uh, off with uh, in, uh, engaging with all of our, all of our three dimensional selves um, you out there too, than using our bodies. Um, so we're gonna energize our whole selves. Bruce, will you start us off? Uh, yes, I will. Uh, thank you, folks. Uh, before getting into the realities of this radical change we're all experiencing together, uh, let's take a moment to just breathe and call up the things that have and continue uh, to bring us comfort and a bit of joy in this time. Uh, a few of us have gathered some uh, items that, that bring us joy. I have this little, this little blue jellyfish Blue glass jellyfish next to me. Um, we're not going to do anything with them. It's just good here to keep me comfort and keep keep me joy. Um, so uh, all together, everyone, we're going to just close our eyes. We're going to use the power of our imagination and our five senses. We're going to breathe in, thinking of what brings you comfort, uh, and breathe out, speaking that thought aloud, uh, calling out for it. Uh, and if you'd like to share with us uh, at home, go ahead and drop it in the chat since we can't see you. Uh, I know we can't see each other, but I'm hoping this will still feel uh, communal. So uh, go ahead and relax yourself. You can lay your feet uh, flat on the ground. That'd be fantastic. Some of us are standing. Do whatever makes you comfortable. And breathe in. Breathe into your nose, thinking of what you see that brings you comfort. Thinking of what you see that brings you comfort. And breathe it out. If you want to share with us in the chat, go right ahead. You want to say it out loud to your neighbor who you're watching would do that as well. Go ahead and breathe in, closing your eyes, thinking of things you hear that bring you comfort. Thinking of things you hear that bring you comfort. 
and then breathe out, sharing it with us. Now go ahead and breathe in, thinking of things you smell that bring you comfort and joy. Things you smell that bring you comfort and joy. And breathe it out, share it with us. Mm, I got some carrot cake in the corner. Mm. Now once again, breathe in, thinking of things you taste that bring you comfort and joy. Mm. Breathe it out, and share it with us. Get us some ice cream. And lastly, things you touch that bring you comfort. I'll breathe it out and share it with us. Drop it in the chat if you'd like. Now, if anybody wants to share some of those comforts and joys uh, that, are, that are now brimming in your head, swimming around in your head, go ahead and drop it in the chat. We've got this whole collection of comforts and joys one last breath together into your nose and out through your mouth. Thank you. I hand it off to Ryan to get us moving. Hi everyone, thank you for that, Bruce. Um, now that we're grounded, we're gonna shake everything up again. Yeah, in <laughs> the body. So if you can stand for one second, if not, you can do the seated, great. And just start bouncing, shifting your weight left and right. Shake it up. Think of shaking all the cells inside of you. Shake all that meat on our bones. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Shake our hands out. Shake it out, shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. Let's shake our <laughs> Shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. Don't forget to shake your booty out. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Shake one leg out. Yes, 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 yes. Shake the other leg out. Shake, 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 shake. shake. Take your face out. Uh, let your tongue go. Uh, uh, and if you can reach the arms up. One, two, three, four. Press down. Five, six, and seven, and eight, and a one. Two, three, four, and a five. Shake your booty. Seven, and eight, and a one. Two, three, four, and a five. Six, seven, and eight, and a one. A two, a three, a four, five, six, and that is it. Great. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> ah, that feels good. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Yes. Yes. Oh, seeing all this stuff in the chat. Yes, please. Isn't that good? Feels good. Because we are in, we are three dimensional in a two dimensional space. Hi, welcome to pandemic art. <laughs> <laughs> but how, 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 and what are we doing? Ah, oh, thank you. That was amazing, Bruce and Ryan. Thank you. Um, so, okay, so let's see, let's see. I'm talking about. Yes, one of the things that we talked about in our earlier conversations is about the access that has been uh, created by or created in this moment. Um, and uh, the audience uh, gets to get closer to the art, the art the artists get closer to the audience, maybe, maybe that's part of what's happening. Um, it feels like a new access, but it also kind of has been around. I know that some of you have been playing in these mediums for a while. Um, so I wonder what all of you have felt about the pros and cons about this streaming medium. Um, you know, Ryan, I know you always create joy in your classes, but now it's like not containing a single room, you know, and we get to get with your sweaty classes on, or on, a, I, on Instagram. You have thousands yeah. of people dancing with you. Um, how has this time changed that for you in terms of evolved your ideas about connection and community through the access? Well, you know, I think as artists, we, <laughs> we have uh, the joy of having a lot of roadblocks <laughs> and how we create and what we create. And I think this is just another one. It's like, how do we get around it? How do we jump over it? And for me, you know, I, I felt like I was limited actually in a way and having one box to teach my classes, max of 75 people, not enough room. like. It was also incredible to have all these bodies in the room, but now I have access to the world and um, most of the world, I should say. And um, it's been incredible to share uh, what I love to do, which is 
bring joy to people through dance. And so I've been able to access tens of thousands of people now through through my classes. So it's been incredible. It's been incredible to have that outreach. It's been incredible to chat with people from around the world. Um, like I said, like I don't, I didn't have time to travel to teach. Even New York was like difficult. So I don't know, it just kind of became easier for okay. me in terms of like sending a camera up in my room. And then I can just like open it up publicly to everyone and people can join in. And so it's been, it's been a for the most part, a positive experience through that, bringing, the, bringing a dance community together, raising money for ACLU, for local artists, for my dance teachers at the Sweat Spot. Um, so it's been, it's, it's been incredible, actually, I gotta say, I wasn't expecting it. I expected some friends to log on, next thing you know, yeah, it was a little out of control. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. The welcoming, uh, I, want to, I want to point to the welcoming that you, the, of, of welcoming people into your space Mm. Um, in terms of like the, I, I have felt that when I take your classes and I know Christina like you're you are welcoming people into your space literally when you perform and you've been doing a lot of these a lot of these performances on zoom and we come into your house yeah right how, how yeah <laughs> oh is nuts it is I was really skeptical uh this could happen but it was like what choice do we have like I don't want to be uh I was talking to some venues that were like do you think we think we might be able to start, you know, get campus going? Can you fly over? And I was like, I don't be responsible for super spreader. I don't want the reason for your next outbreak to be the Christina Wong show at, you know, at your campus. So, so um, it was it was a lot of like trying to find the natural dramaturgy in my home and like because I was like my my home is like a casting candidate for hoarders like on the real and and I was just like I don't I, like everyone's it's, uh, backdrop is so nice and my house is so messy and and I think I began to uh, work with my director Diana Wyan and try to figure out well how can this actually support part of the storytelling instead of a light change we shift um how yeah. how can I embrace the joy like I don't have my whole setup but I would I would I had all this patriotic campaign stuff all over the house and then I had to also invest in like lights that I still don't know how they work. I'm not a light person. <laughs> I, I have to get more because your house doesn't naturally light itself for a theater. But um, I think it makes the experience more intimate. Uh, I, I'm getting really, like I've gotten really interesting feedback. Like I love your dirty dishes in your sink. It's so intimate. And I'm like, yeah, going for that. Or that I'm wearing house slippers with my white pantsuit, like in my show. And I'm just so, I, it's not something that I want to do for the rest of my life, like perform on Zoom. I, look forward to seeing people in person again and hugging my audience members. But, you know, in the interim, this is what it is. And uh, I think so much about being in now is just really being in your emotions and, and, and not trying to wait for something to open up. It's just making and being. Yeah, where you are, being where you are right now and making from there, yeah. Which is so much of what theater is, right? It's like being present in the moment with an audience. And it's just taking that philosophy to life too, right? Is the being present with this moment and going, okay, here it is. What are we making? What are we doing? All right. Yeah, that accessibility, it, it's interesting to the, how, how you are bringing the people or allowing people, both of you are allowing people into your home. And I know Patricia, you've been, you've been, uh, you were facilitating and producing uh, play, uh, the readings at the, at the uh, at, down at the Kirk Douglas that you can, everyone can check out. Um, that accessibility and the fact that they were made free um, was really exciting. Can you speak to, I mean, I know that there were some, also some like, you know, the hurdles that you have to go through to make something right now like that. And then also what about that accessibility that we can get to people or we can't get to all the people? Yeah, I think, I think it's, well, we also did Christina show at the Douglas as well, which was amazing. Um, but we, what you're referring to is the Greek trilogy of Luis Alfaro, which was in partnership with the Getty um and it's streaming now and we did decide to do it free and we also uh captioned it in spanish as well to really try to expand the audience um that we don't normally do at center theater group and so that was something that we were really passionate about and the getty really wanted us to uh, commit to which was fabulous um but just a kind of two things before we get into kind of how that all happened um what I wanted to talk about with access and just comment on what Ryan and Christina were saying is I think that it does expand us to a global conversation. 
Um, and that's really what is exciting, both with Center Theater Group and also my new work with NET and what that could mean in terms of digital collaborations. Um, but just acknowledging that a lot of indigenous and other communities do not have access to Wi-Fi that you know works. <laughs> you see these photos, right, of young young school children outside of Taco Bell trying to do their homework because they don't have Wi-Fi, you know, that it is fast enough for them to participate in their classroom settings. And so just being conscious that not everybody that can, you know, click of a button, get on the internet, um, particularly those who are most impacted by COVID health-wise as well. And I know Christina will talk a little bit about that too, because I know she does a lot of work in, uh, you know, with those communities. Um, but that's just the reality. And I think, you know, it's great to put everything online and it's great to go digital, but we also have to be cognizant, like how are we physicalizing still in a safe way? <laughs> you know, we don't want the super spreader event. Um, so that's something I've been really thinking about. Um, and also, you know, burnout is real. Zoom fatigue is real, right? <laughs> you know, so making sure that what we're putting out is it, it is digestible. It's not like a, you know, a six hour <laughs> saga or anything like that. Or that if you do that, maybe you make it so that people can take breaks, et cetera, or to have it streaming so people can pause it whenever they, they need to um, take care of needs. Uh, so that's something I've been thinking about. But in terms of, and this kind of dips, I think, into, you know, what we were going to talk about next, but just growth, right? This whole, whole time is this real painful uh, area of growth. So Center Theater Group is, you know, very large regional theater. And we kind of pressed pause for about six months. We were a little bit like, are we going to come back? Are we not going to come back? And then finally, you know, we started working with the digital stage. And I have to say, it's really pushed us to work in a completely different way. You know, we would normally have, you know, 15 things going on at one time. And for the first time we had like nothing or two things going on. So everybody was able to work on the project. And also I think it really changed us in terms of humbled me anyway, I can speak from the eye, you know, to say, I don't know what I'm doing. You know, like I don't work in film. I don't work in the digital sphere. And I would love for Bruce to talk about this because you just produced something with Cornerstone. But for us, it, I was really for the first time saying, I'm not going to have the answers. You're not going to have the answers, but we're going to figure it out together. And I think somebody like Center Theater Group, who you know produces at such a high caliber and and so, and so much, it was really hard to take that breath and to say we're going to figure it out, but we're not always going to get it right the first or you know first or third or fifth time. <laughs> um, but they're beautiful shows, and I'm very proud of them. But Christina can attest we test people, uh, you know, a hundred times before they enter the building, and they have to wear these face shields, and so it's. It's theater, film hybrid, and it's also about people's comfortability. We're also totally understanding this. If people say, you know, I get the testing, I get the face shield, I get all that, but I'm still not gonna, I'm still not gonna come in. And then how do we move away to another idea or maybe make space for that person later in the future? Yeah, yeah. Bruce, uh, do you wanna add to that also? Cause I know that um, you, you were, you had spoken about some ways that you, uh, you and, and especially with Cornerstone that you had gone kind of more analog or ways that you have been able to find access without technology. Uh, yes, actually uh, at Cornerstone, um, we have a, a project that um, uh, we're doing with uh, Larissa Fasshorse in South Dakota called the Dakota Nakota Lakota Project. Uh, and uh, due to the, the lack of dependable like internet connection and everywhere how hard it is to for for this access that everybody a lot of people are enjoying right now is is just not accessible to a lot of people uh but to to continue our engagement uh in in south dakota we mailed um these these uh books with with prompts to continue an exercise that uh that uh, our, our awesome member uh, lynn jeffries had designed and drew them out uh and they're they're out there right now um being filled with with stories um, and that's just one of the ways in which uh, Cornerstone has really uh, made that pivot to um, to adapt to the times and to and to and to make it happen. We also just did a show in in Highland Park where uh, we started doing this this our, this engagement process in person before the pandemic hit, and uh, and then once it hit, we had to switch to an entirely online process. And it, it's another one of those cases. Everybody everybody is trying to do something that they have not done before uh, in order to. Uh, to continue to create, um, like although although you can't do the thing that you're that you're used to doing, uh, it doesn't mean that 
that you're out of of, of, of opportunities and out of um, out of answers. You know, this problems are just solutions you haven't found yet. Um, and as long as we are are working to find new ways to communicate and still make it happen, like we're it doesn't have to be a setback. Um, it doesn't have to be uh, like a loss on on that engagement. Uh, you just have to find a new way to do it that may not be what you're used to doing. I love that. I love that attitude. Like, I think so much of what I'm figuring out now is that artists actually, because I also run a sewing group, which is a pretend FEMA, is that artists have answers that systems that we're supposed to work don't have. And in ways I'm finding, if I can brag about my sewing group, the Auntie Sewing Squad, which Benina will put the link in the chat, is, <laughs> is that like, we're literally figuring out like, well, how do we get medical supplies to Standing Rock? if FEMA is not gonna do that? Uh, how do we get um, masks to elders in Alaska that have been hit hard with uh, COVID infections, but, but the shipment that was sent to them is stuck in a holding facility? Like it's all been mutual aid folks who for the most part are very creative people figuring out, well, if I know this guy with a jet, we can mail it to this nonprofit and they can just fly it into that community, right? And so uh, and, and like a lot of that, is sort of what I'm witnessing is that, yeah, these are problems, but we can't just throw up our hands and walk away. Um, these are like real life or death circumstances uh, that that we, we just have to, you know, figure it out. And I would, and I think a lot of what is being said is that the arts aren't essential. We're not essential laborers. So we just have to put things on hold. And I think it's become very clear there's sort of this hunger for contact and seeing each other and that we are finding ways to push um, to keep everyone safe, but but still maintain that sense of like community, creative thought, <laughs> entertainment, whatever it is you say that we do. Yeah, can you speak, can anyone want to, to talk about the opportunities that have, have come out of this period of time? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm gonna jump in on that one. I, I, I just made my debut as an opera director, I directed the Anonymous Lover for the LA Opera, uh, and uh, we did it like in, in a theater with with people, but what I'm saying is, opportunity-wise, like that, I I don't see a world that didn't involve a, a pandemic causing seasons to be canceled and everything to go away. Uh, for me, uh, uh, a, a new director uh, and artist from Watts to direct for the LA Opera and, and step into doing something totally out of my wheelhouse, like this this is what had to happen in order for that opportunity to surface. And, and I feel like I've already gained so much from it. And, and it's not just me that is experiencing this. This is, this, is a, this is another shared experience where opportunities are popping up out of nowhere. People that um, would have to normally commute uh, across massive distances to, to, to be a part of a gig or a part of a collaboration or something like that don't have to make that travel anymore. They can do it from home because people are finding ways to make it happen without putting yourself in danger. You know, um, and it's just it. There, there are so many opportunities popping up, and I, I'd love to hear more about them, uh, because, you know, it's not just an opportunity for organizations to change the way they the the way they treat people and the way they um, they do their work. Uh, it's an opportunity for uh, massive like institutional changes and systemic changes to like fundamentally like actually finally change the way we do things and the way we uh, exist as we do things, the way we treat each other. Um, and it's only coming from everything going to a standstill and it's not being able to go back to business as usual because business as usual suck for a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah, I just have to support that. I, I have this, um, I actually pulled up this quote from Sonia Renee Taylor, who I'm obsessed with. I don't know if anybody's read, read her book, Body, My Body's Not an Apology, but it just reminded me so much, Bruce, of what you're saying right now. Oh, do you have it? Oh, no, I'm just writing it down. <laughs> but it, says, it, says, um, it says, we will not go back to normal. Normal never was. Our mm -hmm. pre-corona existence was not normal other than we normalize greed, inequity, exhaustion, depletion, extraction, disconnection, rage, hoarding. She goes on and on. And so we're given an opportunity here, right, to weave a new garment, one that fits all humanity and nature. And I think particularly, um, I could speak at least for the regional, you know, regional model is that we are really talking about how do we disrupt hierarchy? How do we work with more artists and, and center Black and Indigenous voices? 
how are we and 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 in an authentic way right and not in a tokenizing way and so i think that's also part of what really needs to be challenged and pushed in and we're also doing the same at my new role in net we're really talking about we changed our membership to pay what you can not just because obviously people are having financial difficulties but we want everybody in the conversation and sometimes again going back to access sometimes that access point is really prohibitive and then you're only having certain people in the conversation so i'll just i just wanted to offer that quote bruce because it was so exactly what you're talking about it's like normal what was normal that was not normal yeah. that was terrible <laughs> i'm going to get that my body is not an, ap not an apology please. yeah i could put the link in the uh, chat too <laughs> people are asking about the book yeah totally for sure yeah yeah um it really oh, go ahead please go ahead I, I definitely feel that um, while our work is now more accessible to a big audience, I think the experience is reduced still. It's definitely no no replacement for getting to see each other in person and share the same air and chat after. And um, I know I'm having a hard time focusing. I don't know who's, are you focusing on me out there? Mm -hmm. But like, you know, <laughs> it's, 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 so that, that has been a little, tr a tricky trade-off in figuring out how to, stay engaging. I uh, I will say with our neighborhood council meetings, which have moved to Zoom, we have a lot more people coming in at meetings and now speaking up because they couldn't get childcare before. They couldn't um, take a whole night off to sit in a room in a library to speak for two minutes. Now they can just kind of keep the meeting on. Um, and they've gotten really organized with each other in a group. And then they all have these concerted um, pushes for things. Uh, but we've also lost all our Korean speakers. Uh, there, there was translation available, but I think that it was just maybe just too difficult to try to keep up in that format with the simultaneous translation. So I, I don't want to paint this as like, oh my God, the internet's great. Because as Bruce pointed out, there are many communities who are, who are not um, accessing. Yeah, and that we have to, I mean, how to keep those communities in mind as we are continuing to create and use these tools that we are being given here, but then how do we take steps further outside of the box, right? Yeah. Um, I'm curious, can I ask a question? Yeah. Once again, go ahead, lady. It's not right because we've gotten so much, I mean, as a theater practitioner, we've gotten so much feedback from folks about the, about, um, being so stiff, right? Like, the, and that's another challenge of like these Zoom spheres is that everybody is like sitting a lot and not going outside. I don't know if you have tips. I'm just gonna take notes. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, yeah, unfortunately I teach, now I'm teaching one class a week, but I'm, I'm archiving everything so people can, you know, pick as they want from the months prior to. And I just encourage, you know, Dance is such a great access to happiness, to the health. And I really just think that it's a, it's a magical art form and you can get out of your mind and it can be silly, it can be fun. I have two year olds taking my class and then I have like 70 and above taking my class. I have people in wheelchairs taking my class. It's just like, I say, get, get your dance on. I really do think that it's like, it's accessible. You don't even need music or pick your favorite song. I just always encourage people to dance. I think it's it saved me actually during the pandemic. I didn't know how much it would have saved me actually, but it gave me a focus and, um, you know, I'd study three hours a night finding music and it really gave me a purpose actually during this time. And um, yeah, and I think it's accessible. I think it's, I think it's, you know, it's in us. We don't need anything to do it. And we don't need anyone, which is great. So even a couple, you know, mo moments a day, I think it's it's worth it. It's medicine. Yeah. What What are some other other ways that you all are taking care of yourself in these? As you are, you 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 all hold space for other artists and communities. So how are you taking care of yourselves? I've been going on a bike ride with my my brother and his family uh, on most Sundays, and it's something that I would have never made time for had had we not been put on pause for a moment and and not been able to do projects not been able to go anywhere i would have never made time for this in my life but now it's a now it's a vital part because it's that it's that communion with you know loved ones um that is really really helping same i feel like i'm facetiming more than ever <laughs> with friends and family and you know 
I was the normal, you're right. I was like caught up in this working world and now I have a moment and it feels so damn good to, to get back to, you know, the basics of what family is. And yeah, it's been, it's been great to have these breaks, you know, put on. Mm. Auntie Sewing Squad has a whole care system built in because it was so stressful the first few weeks because literally, and it's still happening now, like just dozens of entities a day, like asking for masks and like, and I feel like I'm playing God, like who do I keep alive with what, you know, cause we're not, we're not keeping up with the demand obviously on home sewing machines to make masks. And uh, basically had my period through my pants for two days straight and didn't even notice. Like I was that stressed out and people were noticing <laughs> and uh, offered to send pizzas. And I was like, I can't eat five pizzas that have been offered today. So we created the system where they could be sent to other aunties who are stressed out of their machine. So it's not like payment and it's not that we're food insecure, but it's creating the system where we consciously send care or, and if you don't so bring a home cooked meal to somebody, you know, it's just a, a nice, sweet way of letting folks know that we're thinking about them, that, that, that if we as aunties are being accountable to the health of the community, that you can also be accountable to our health and to our well-being. And that has been what has saved us and why we are still managed to be around as a group eight months later. It's really extraordinary. Uh, as yeah. a, I have to say that, you know, being a, I'm, I'm a driver auntie, I don't sew, but I drive. <laughs> So picking up and driving around town and um it, it has definitely been one of the things that has brought me joy in being able to part like be be able to participate and be helpful in some in some form or another um with uh, you know i don't have those skills but oh what can i what else can i do mm -hmm. and really great yeah yeah and then and i think what has been really cool is that there are so many folks in our group who don't necessarily sew and we have kids who just write like cheerleader notes that we send to aunties and we have a, a, someone who just teaches yoga classes for the aunties. So it's like, it's just whole, kind of like a cult, but it's not, it's its own community. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm L. Wong Hubbard. Anyway, I don't know if any of these inside jokes make any sense to the skirball crowd, but here I am, <laughs> here I am, baby. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I think it's just so important to Think about the people who are giving care and I think if there was a big movement at the top of this to just like feed the frontline workers who are like and there still is the, the, they're stressed out and and what can we offer them and give them um because if they if they can't take care of themselves how are they going to take care of those who are really sick yeah I wanted to offer to you know something I've been really cognizant of is supporting local food businesses you know during the pandemic not I'm not into the outdoor dining sorry <laughs> not into it but you know I support whatever, whatever your personal choices but I just feel like I want to support at least you know with takeout or donations or gift cards because a lot of these local businesses are really hurting and I started um, a blog recently called nourishment where I you know interview an artist of color and I also buy food from a local whatever that person's local favorite establishment that's owned by a vendor of color because I really want to have a conversation around how do we support our communities? Like how is our money actually going back into local businesses, not chains, <laughs> like about local businesses and particularly, you know, uh, restaurant owners of color uh, in Los Angeles and Southern California. And so really thinking about that and being cognizant of where our, my dollar is spent um, and really making sure that you were having these rich conversations, but over food, right? Even if it's digital for now, um, but breaking bread and sharing community that way. Um, and also, I mean, my wife and I have lived in our neighborhood now for two years. And I, I, I mean, I'm talking to so many more neighbors just because we're here more and I have dogs. So I have to go outside a lot, but also just asking, right? Like, hey, I'm going to the grocery store. Can I get you something? You know, do you all need anything? Hey, what's going on over there? <laughs> I'm not being totally nosy, but um, I, it, it just was something I would never think to do before. And maybe that's on me and something I need to self-reflect on. But I think it was really a beautiful thing to like, just get ice cream from my neighbor or whatever it was that she needed just so she wouldn't have to make that special trip. Um, especially right now with, you know, everything surging. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
the the connecting to 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 uh, my direct my, my my the circles out. I mean, we've been talking about directing or connecting with circles way out, but then there's also this conference, like what you were saying about the family connection, the deeper things that are happening within and just in just in my direct area and how I can support there. Yeah. Anybody want to add anything more about joy and support? That's it. That's oh. all the joy we get. <laughs> It's all the joy we got. It's all. No, I, what I do love about this moment is, in terms of making work, I feel like the stakes are so low. In terms of like, I, I could describe this moment as like the emotional high school poetry thing, where you just, just make something, and it's like, a, and if people come, great, you know, like, but no one, no artist should feel like their career is going to end because, like, you know, during quarantine. She did the Zoom show and it was terrible. So I wouldn't present her on the main stage. Like, how dare you, right? Like, what, like, when, why, why would that even happen? And I feel like there's so, um, I've borrowed a lot personally from the aesthetics of ch children's theater when, when doing my shows, just like, like cheap tricks and terrible backgrounds. Like, that's, and, and the audience loves it. And, and I'm like, I kind of love the non pretentiousness of like, just, you know, like, yay like i don't i couldn't you know i don't have to worry about not getting the pulitzer for this i'm just gonna do it so i was gonna get it anyway you know so I, I don't know that's that's the joy of it i think is that like audiences are really into the cheap tricks and just like the just the just the fact that you try to put something together you know and anyway yeah, I'm endlessly uh, impressed uh, <laughs> by anybody who manages to get anything done at this time. Yeah. Uh, let alone anything that you could call good, like you yourself could call good that you've made. Like, it's, I'm I'm shocked that you just got it done because everything is just so difficult right now. So mm -hmm. like, and it only really gets done because you either you either you know pulled it together yourself or you pulled in resources from the people that you trust the absolute most at this time. You know, uh, and it's pretty beautiful. I think it's really important though, what you just said, Bruce, in terms of we as theater folks, and I don't know, Ryan, if this is the case in, in dance, but like there's this show must go on mentality. And I feel like right now there's there's like a moment to say like, hey, you all, <laughs> we're all going through something. And I mean, I could speak, you know, for the trilogy, we had lots of, <laughs> lots of like, bumps in the road, a lot of learning. And there was a point where we were like, we're just gonna have to reschedule this or oh that it's not gonna be edited in time so that's gonna be pushed back two weeks and like it made my skin crawl because as a producer you know we're like you know gotta be on time but that to give that grace to something to know that it's something new um yeah I don't know I just I just feel like that's something that wouldn't have happened before yeah I really I really want to thank you for offering that word into the into the, in here grace I think that has been um, that's been a, 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 a guiding light for me in this time as well. Ryan, you were going to say something. I cut you off. Um, I think it was just about yeah, dance still happening. There's been numerous dance companies in LA who've created pieces outside. People would come in their cars, and that's how you would witness the performance. There's been drag shows, you know, at the drive-in theater, and it's been beautiful actually to see yeah the creativity that comes along with. A pandemic. Um, yeah, so people really have been, I think, reaching out to different ways of creating work and having their work be seen. And that's, that's been exciting in the dance community for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. I mean, when, you know, artists work in like, oh, here are the parameters and we figure out then how to fill those and go beyond. Oh, wait, here are the parameters. Okay, fill those again and go beyond. I think that's kind of part of what makes artists artists and yeah and I, this is a perfect time for that um i want to take a little moment here to grab a couple of questions for the panel um from the q a let's see uh herb isaacs asks uh, for the panel my experience as an actor in theater has always thrived on the electricity of the room and how the actors communicate directly with the audience how do you cope with that loss oh i leave the chat open during my shows and then uh, there are parts where I actually turn off the mics and have them communicate. And that was, those were the parts that used to be interactive on stage. And then I just read that after, and I spend time with the audience afterwards. Like they may leave right after, but 
just to have them turn the cameras on, say hi to them. I debrief with the screen manager, which I think is really important. So that, and then I make sure I already have a meal in my refrigerator so that I'm not exhausted trying to do that post-show meal, which used to be at a Thai restaurant with all these happy people. Um, so that's, I mean, it's more just coping, but I, I also acknowledge that it's not for everyone. Like my, my lighting designer, um, Joey Gutsman, is running a bakery out of his house because he's like, I, I'm not gonna do this. I'm not gonna do lighting. And you can find other passions that, that communicate to people, that touch people that, that might serve you better at this time. But for me, I'm used to doing lots of shows where people don't get it and don't laugh at me. And so I just sort of sit into that. I just <laughs> keep going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I always, uh, uh, I call back to, I, I go back to my training and I don't mean my training as like a, like an actor. Cause I, I mean, I got like professional actor training, but I'm talking about your training as a child where like the, the rules change or, you know, nobody's there. And all that energy is coming from you and your imagination and your immediate surroundings. And then I also have my, my, my food or my vices either on the way or in the table off camera next to me. So I can, you know, dive into sorrow with joys afterwards. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I mean the, I had, I did a, a reading with I am a theater and they actually created, they sent us a link afterwards to go to a, to go all gather in another zoom. Mm -hmm. So we had a moment as a cat, or we had some time as a cast to just have a moment of download. Because I know the one thing, the thing about, that I find that is always a little disconcerting is like, like tonight we'll be done with this. I will close my laptop and I will stand alone in my house. <laughs> and it's just a, an immediate feeling of like, whoa, you know, and here, what do I do now? Mm -hmm. So it was really nice to like, people are trying to find ways that we can connect after, I think. And, uh, Christina, you wrote a really great article about. Um, uh, yeah, I'll put it in the chat. So but great. it was like all these things I learned from doing Zoom theater, and a lot of it was like uh, how to cope with the loneliness after. Oh yeah, actually, we just did a uh, the, for Highland Park is here. We had there was these, these there's this platform called Whereby where you can all watch a program together. Like so, you have it zooming, you have the video, and then you have everybody else's video because we're all watching it together at the same time. And then afterwards, we were just hanging out in the room talking to each other, you know, break our rooms of your friend, <laughs> I think. Wait, what was that called? That's cool. Oh, uh, whereby. Whereby, all right. Whereby, you can all watch together. That's great, awesome. Um, okay, let's do another one from the, from the Q and A here. Uh, Katie is asking, do you think the real systemic change the theater needs is really happening? What changes are you seeing? What changes need to be made? People getting fired. Did you say people are getting fired? I said people getting fired. Yeah. People that people that probably should have been fired a long time ago are getting fired. Uh, um, yeah, that's, that's one thing that's happening for sure. Uh, so I think I think some of the changes are need are 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 happening, but they're not any changes that anybody that buys a ticket uh, will see until until we until we get there into live performance. Like I think if you're if you're in if you're in the weeds trying to. Uh, combat the, the, the issues you're um, right now you know what's happening uh, you know where it's not happening uh, there are lists out there circulating of people who haven't companies who haven't you know made statements or done any of that work and you will be called out uh, if that's what you're doing uh, if you're not being sincere in the work that you need to do uh, we will notice and 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 we will tell the world yeah I just want to support that I mean I feel like you know um, where we have reached kind of a a racial reckoning within, you know, theaters, uh, probably globally, but definitely nationally. And, you know, there's a lot of different movements that we see, Dear White American Theater, here in Los Angeles, you know, there was a BIPOC letter that came out for Center Theater Group. And so there's a lot of um, conversations happening around, again, not tokenization, but true authentic equity. And what does that look like? And I think for a long time, we were not necessarily that people weren't paying attention to it, because I think everybody was paying attention to it. But I think to Bruce's point, I think it's it's now realizing that this is this is not an overnight fix. This is going to be a deep, deep commitment to your community and to listening and to really shifting the infrastructure, the way these, the, I'm speaking from the regional model and I'm sure Bruce, it's different for you all because you have been doing, Cornerstone's been doing this work for, you know, and Watts has been doing this work for many years in terms of putting the community center and listening mm -hmm. 
and not to say Center Theater Group wasn't doing that, but I think that we we definitely have a, a shift in the way that we're talking about work. And we were just talking about this when we did our check-in, you know, Christina, I've been a huge fan of Christina's for many years. And Christina is our, one of our Sherwood awardees. And I really push, you know, for Christina to be produced for, for ever, <laughs> among other people. And, you know, we finally ended up doing her work this year. And it was like, because it was this perfect um, collision of the show being so politically relevant in this moment. And also just Christina being somebody that, you know, she's on our creative collective. She's somebody that we've been wanting to invest in for a number of years. But I would ask, you know, if I wasn't there, would that happen? Or what, mm -hmm. if this conversation had shifted, would that have happened? I don't know. I can't say for sure, but I also want to make sure that people are advocating and mm -hmm. staying on it, you know, because this work, it, 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 it's, a com it's a commitment. I do believe the work is out there. It's just not getting programmed. And I'm so grateful to, this is my public thank you for Patricia for um, for advocating, but we need advocates who are also, you know, on, on the programming side of it. And if it's a predominantly white American institution, <laughs> they're probably, I, I don't know. They're probably like also like just trying to survive that environment in addition to also pushing us you know, up the ranks. So I, 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 I really appreciate um, your advocacy and I want to point out that that's a dynamic within these orgs. Absolutely, absolutely. Awesome, thank you for all of that. Um, uh, let's see, one more here. Uh, when you, uh, from oops, Emily G, when you take your work online and your audience expands, changes so much, international online access, how do you connect with them? How do you conceptualize who your audience might be? How to connect with them versus just blasting it into the void? This one's for more, uh, yeah. Uh, Ryan, you want to start with that one? Sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm really conscious of my language when I teach. I think it's important to include people. I'm not just barking at them, but I give them chores to do so they feel like they have to work and f be creative on their own. So it's not just me regurgitating a move here or there, but I try to empower them. I try to give them tools like meditation. And, and another one, a good thing is uh, to make them accountable for creating all of this energy. I'm just there like barking, but like they, I, I, at the end, we all settled down. I was like, you thank yourself for doing this, for having, you know, enough, energy to bring forward to this and to make yourself feel good, like take that with you and take it onto the world. Um, but yeah, I think just um, really being aware, I usually when I start my classes, I always say Toronto in the house, we have Australia, like really like get the scope of it. Cause that's what was the most shocking to me is not how many people, but from which countries it was mind blowing. So I think for people like, you know, we do reverence at the end and like your energy goes out of your heart and then I allow people to receive it. Open up your sternum, receive this love from 8,000 people. Yes, <laughs> and it works, it works. I think, you know, this like maybe spirituality and this like connective um, energy is so possible. And I think that this is what the internet was created for. I think for a long time is so isolating and Instagram and likes and like just communication for me wasn't really there. And this is kind of a breakthrough. It's like, oh yeah, this is the World Wide web, you know? And this is like what we're choosing to do, you know, what we're choosing to do with it. You know, everyone's doing something different, but like the access to like communal group positivity, health, it's all there. But I think it's, it's just being very, aware of how you're talking to people, I feel like I think is huge. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Christina, anything about how, how are you connect? How do you feel like you are uh, or working to connect to your audiences in this two dimensional? <laughs> well, I think uh, doing a lot of the work with the aunties, which I meet them in person outside my house very briefly, we're both masked and I throw elastic in their backseat. And I think like having actual human contact in that way is, is important. Um, but in addition to these shows, I think sort of what Ryan's saying is sort of shout out the folks in the room and like uh, and acknowledge that they're there and um, compliment them on the on their bookcase and just 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 let them know that 
we can see them too. We're all in this sort of situation. Um, and I think just sort of constantly just pointing to the humor of this kind of ridiculous, strange, um, I'll describe it as sort of like a, what's just that? It feels like a terrible acting exercise where you have to constantly be like six feet away. But I can't remember what school of theater this is right now but <laughs> but yeah that, that we're here and this is what this is and you know and find ways to laugh viewpoints that's it gina yes a terrible that's what i said at the top of this it lost my brain i was like this feels like a I terrible viewpoints you exercise I love you <laughs> Whatever, <right? laughs> actually it's funny it brings it. viewpoints up. yes, yes. i know we love viewpoints but i don't want to live viewpoints <laughs> for eight months come on truth <laughs> well, I took, a, I took a, video, a class with Peter Quo about making uh, making making theater in the Zoom, and he used the phrase um, uh, uh, "shared imaginary three dimensional space." That yeah. we are, and, and it it really sank in for me because on one level I was like, "Oh, we're always as artists, we're constantly creating shared imaginary space, right, together." And now there's this three dimensional aspect of it that we need to. <laughs> We need to figure out also then in this shared imaginary space how how are we contacting each other three dimensionally, which like kind of blew my mind, but also has opened things up for me in terms of how I relate to like talking to the how do how do I speak to the people who are beyond the box? How do I reach out for, through there? I don't know, Bruce. Do you have some thoughts? Because I know you've been you've been working a lot in the in the Zoom rooms and contacting communities. Uh, it's, well, one thing, uh, it's, it's just super intimate because we're, we're already in people's homes. Uh, like you're in, you're in your very personal space, uh, which, which takes a lot of vulnerability, you know, like, like I'm at, I'm, I'm not even at home right now, but when I am at home, which is where I host Unheard LA from, I'm in like a very, I'm in a, I'm in a very small room at the moment while I'm, I'm waiting for some things to, to, to happen, but you know, like I was very insecure about that tiny space that I was in, but opening up to the world uh, in a sense, or, or my colleagues when I'm in a Zoom meeting really, really helps. But what we do is, you know, we, when we talk, we're sharing that, 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 that big shared three-dimensional space, like one thing that we really, that I personally need, I try to lean into is, um, is remembering the power of that, of that, of that imagination and how it's not just for, not just for playtime, it's for, it's for all time. Um, and using that uh, and remembering that no matter what, we're kind of like on the same, we're kind of like on the same plane here, you know, we're kind of in the same boat. So uh, it's, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a, a two way, a two way street of, of playing with, the, with, with, with that communication, using, using the chat, um, finding places in your space and uh, using these, these signifiers to let you know, like, uh, like where you're at and, um, and how you're, coming into the room that is all virtual now. I, I think that answers the question, I'm not sure. Good. I think one of the big, big game changers you, that you and I talked about, Jessica, was the, the once you stand, if you figure out, a, and I know a few of you are at standing desks, yeah. like that was like yeah. this huge thing. <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh, there's a, okay. That's, I'm like halfway, halfway to the theater. And then for me, I have the setup, which is like this rolling chair with two Tupperwares on it, which everyone thinks is a crazy steady cam. And I'm like, no, this is my, this is my, my, like my freestanding table movie thing. So I, I think it's just like embracing sort of the this DIY innovation of this moment and, and, and tapping into that part of ourselves as kids that like we could turn uh, uh, anything into a, sh a store and play store. Mm -hmm. whatever right we could turn a I could turn a couch handle into like a gymnastic vault thing right like and it's it's trying to figure out those things in that moment and just I think there's a a charm in it I guess <laughs> yeah I got of sick of the charm but yeah here we are I, think I was on the improv show theater. earlier it's like the expansion of what is theater right I mean I think that there's some really strict narrow definitions are conceptions of theater in terms of a proscenium chair button seat you know and I think that this has given an opportunity to redefine or and they, these artists have been doing this I mean it's not new but I think it's new in terms of folks that are um again speaking from the regional model I think it's a, it's new in the sense of like you know I just saw Jessica and Katie Lindsay's piece where you're outside and it's an audio tour and 
people have been doing these beautiful audio plays and all this great and it's like that's theater too and the and film right like the trilogy and christina wong show on film yes it's a hybrid but it's it is theater <laughs> it's, it's just some it's a different version of theater and i think it's really pushed us out of a of a comfortability around what how we can make theater and how we define what is theater which is a conflict that theater artists and all artists have been have been in this entire time like it's always been this struggle of like and this question of what what is this now you know and i was super apprehensive but i was like super, super like nah that's not that's not theater like in the very like first few months of it uh, but then when you start doing it, it's like, oh no, this is theater because I'm 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 connecting with people. I'm oh I'm doing a team activity, and we just, we just happen to not be in the same place, but we still have to work together to figure out how to do it. You know, like it has all those elements that that are just active, no matter what what space you're in or or how you have to do it. You know, it still has that, you know, the like the real magical parts of it that made you want to do this in the first place, which was you know using your imagination, using your body and like playing with people. Like you can still do that, you know? You just gotta do it like this for a little while longer. <laughs> it was, you know, it, it's, made me, it's made me realize more what those things are. Like, I feel like I had yeah. you know, one in my career where I had, you know, doing and doing and making and making and actually had, was having less thought about why I did those <sighs> in the first place. You know, and this is you know, the gift of being able to to actually look at those pieces and, oh, I want to put more energy into that, you know, make those things happen. Um, I want to be conscious of our time, though. I think we are nearing the end here. Um, but I wanted to give you all, if there's anything else that you all would like to add, um, maybe, I don't know, I mean, I do want to say... Any 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 tips for anyone at the, or like a, a little tip or something for folks as we move into these spaces as an artist? I mean, we've given a lot of thoughts about this stuff, but anything little 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 juicy something that we haven't hit on? You want to share the name of the class that you and Bruce teach? I think that sort of sums up the test. Yeah. Was that for, I'm try to say it together? Okay. Right, on kind of three on three weeks ago, right? <laughs> One, two, three. Fuck it, let's try. <laughs> yeah, and fuck it, let's try is is you know saying fuck it, let's try it. You know, you got an idea, try it. You have a different way of doing this, try it. See, see if it works. Just see if it works. It might not. The worst thing that can happen yeah. is, is it doesn't work, and you try. You come up with a better idea. Just fuck it, let's try. And that's that's, that's in collaboration. That's in solo work. Uh, that's 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 just the way we gotta or just the way I, I would advise <laughs> us to proceed uh, is to just keep trying things, keep taking risks, keep taking leaps, slow down. It's gonna be okay. You don't have to do this right now, <laughs> you know? Um, there yeah. like, as an answer to, I don't know. You know, there are, I, many, there are many answers. I don't know if we're, we're swimming in the sea of, I don't know, both in our, but it, but it is the artistic sweet spot, right? As artists, mm -hmm. I don't know is that place of possibility and, yeah maybe that is true of where in in life as well or can be if we put the that energy into going you know fuck it let's try i don't know fuck it let's try mm -hmm. you know yeah i don't know is my favorite sentence <laughs> favorite yeah it's a good one good 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 three words we can because we have to right or we have to because we can Something like that. <laughs> but we, I, I mean, it's just like, what do you do? Just wait and just sit, sit around and watch Netflix until this is over? I mean, you could if that's part of your like absorbing process. And there are a lot of people like sitting and reflecting. But I think it's, yeah, just try. Shoot it out. Like this is, these are, this is the lowest stakes no one's career is going to end moment of, I think, of, what, what of our lives. But it's like, it's like we're inviting people over, going, we're going over to someone's house for a meal. Meal, yeah, and yeah. so that's what I see a Zoom show as. It's just like, oh, someone took the time to prepare. Is, is it five star pancakes? Maybe not, but wow, I really appreciate they took the time to make this for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I would say just expanding your yeah, expanding the definition of what we think is performance and and going it with your with collaborators. You know, collaboration I think is going to be the key going forward and. I don't that experimentation and pushing form is something that I think we all need to start thinking about what that looks like in the 2021, <laughs> which is right around the corner. 
Well, right on. Oh, what a delight you all are. Thank yes. you. I really, yeah, really thank you all for saying yes and for giving your time and your energy and your talents to this, this conversation. And um, I hope everyone out there, um, there have been lots of links in the chat. I hope that you've all gotten them, I've seen them go by. Thank you all. I'll drop some more. Uh, drop some more, drop some more. Um, and I just wanna say, take a moment to say thank you to um, Jen, Maxi, uh, Larry Sandez, and uh, ooh, can't see, and Nina. Stern and the Skirball Center and staff uh, for having us all and for taking such good care of us. Really appreciate you. Um, Jen, are you there? <laughs> there yeah, she is. I'm here. Jessica, thank you. All right, everybody put your hands together at home for Jessica Hanna, Patricia Garza, Ryan Heffington, Christina Wong, Bruce Lemon Jr. Oh, you guys. I can't thank you enough. I was completely inspired by so much of what you said. And I think just judging from the activity in the chat, so were other people. We're gonna try to get those links to people. We'll try to get them sent out to you. Just, you know, hit us up at the Skirball. I'm Jen Maxey. I'm jmaxey at skirball.org if you ever wanna reach out to me in programs. Um, and please, you know, do follow up with all these artists. Go look at what they're doing. Go find them on Instagram. Take Ryan's class. Find out Bruce. We want to see this thing you're directing. Christina's got her show. Patricia's all over the place doing stuff. So, you know, please go follow them and give them some love. Our artists really are, as you guys all illustrated tonight, working so hard to kind of mirror, define, live through, find joy. Uh, and just kind of illuminate this extraordinary moment that we're in. I also do want to mention, please come to skirball.org and find out what we're doing, because as everyone else is, we are also trying our best to stay in community, to stay connected with people. And we have a beautiful Hanukkah festival if you want to do something with your families and for all ages, beautiful uh, food and art and music and dance on December 13th. So go find, find out about that at skirball.org and just join us again. And um, I'm sending everybody love. Please be safe and healthy through the holiday season. Thanks so much. <laughs>